Joel joins us now in the KUA of News Link a Zoom Room. Uh, Robert, of course, uh, Pacific Area uh, Pacific Association of uh, Radiation uh, Survivors. Robert, good morning. Good morning, Chris. Thank you for having me on your show. Of course, you know Ro- I text Robert all the time. If you ever have any kind of update with this uh, bill that's winding its way through the U.S. Congress, uh, you know, shoot me uh, a message and we'll get you on. And so, Robert, I guess if we could for people just joining us who maybe aren't aware of what. Uh, measure we're talking about that it's working its way uh, through the U.S. Congress. Can you go ahead and just um, give us that info and then we'll move forward with the latest developments? Sure, definitely. Uh, The Radiation Exposure Compensation Act uh, compensates uh, individuals who were uh, exposed to nuclear fallout or uranium miners. And uh, Guam is in two bills uh, in the House, uh, H.R. 5338, to include the residents of Guam. And in the Senate, they have another bill, uh, Senate Bill 2798, and the current bill that just got passed this morning is to extend RECA for another two years because uh, the program uh, was amended in 2000 uh, and it gave it a sunset uh, provision for uh, 22 years, which uh, ends this year in July uh, 10th um, in two months. So what happened is that the Senate uh, decided, uh, Senator Crapo, Senator Graham, Senator Lee, decided to uh, uh, introduce an extension for two years. So, uh, so the program won't end and, and will help us uh, be able to try and get the two bills passed in Congress. And so the unanimous consent, I'm excited because we were in pins and needles since Monday because they said we we're gonna pass the unanimous consent since Monday. So it finally got passed this morning. Uh, and so it passed the Senate uh, for the two year extension now it moves on to the House. Um, hopefully, we we have all the, the the votes in the House, and once it passes, then the president sign it, and then we'll have that two year extension, so we can be able to try and uh, and get those two bills uh, for RICA pass uh, within those years. And the way it worked, Chris, is that uh, Senator Crapo is the, is the sponsor uh, for the Senate bill, uh, the RICA bill, with uh, Senator Lujan from New Mexico. However, uh, Senator Lee, who's running for a re-election again, and he has his own uh, special bill that only uh, includes Utah and New Mexico. So I don't know how it worked out, but uh, they got him to introduce the bill in the Senate, uh, Senator Lee. And so uh, it got passed, uh, which is good for Guam and and other states. I just had a frontline community uh, group meeting this morning I had to sign up early, and um, we're we're all excited. Uh, we can't wait to to see jump another hurdle right. uh, in the house. Yeah, and so that's the good news. The unanimous consent is, is very difficult. I heard, however, it got passed. Uh, that's great to hear, Robert. I remember last time I talked to you, um, you expressed a lot of optimism because you had finally got your you know uh, letter from Governor Lulia Guerrero, basically her go to bat for this issue. Um, letter and now that this uh, thing has passed the Senate, it's on to the House. I, I got to ask, what kind of conversation, if any, have you had with uh, Congressman Mike Nicholas relative to this? Uh, no conversation, nothing. No, no emails, no WhatsApp, no phone calls. Yeah, and um, you know he's running for governor uh, with uh, Sabrina Salas, and uh, you know congratulations to them, and I hope for the best uh, for everyone. And we just continue on, uh, just continue to pray and uh and and we'll see what happens down the road and you know we always got to stay positive uh we have a lot a lot of prayers you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah you definitely stayed positive robert that's kind of an understatement but you know uh, absent any you know, dialogue conversation action willingness the political will whatever you want to call it from the congressman mike and nicholas on on this issue, uh, is it that much more difficult to push it through to get eyes on it in the House? Or are you confident in the relationships that you have established um, in Congress? Yes, we just, uh, after our frontline community meeting this morning, Chris, it was positive because uh, uh, Tina Cordova's from New Mexico and she's a downwinder president. And she's, uh, we're, we're all close with uh, uh, Congresswoman Fernandez and, uh, and Congressman Owens who's pushing it. So what we were told this morning is that they're gonna, uh, uh, positively get uh, uh, an answer from all the the, the congressmen and women, and uh, then they're gonna. Uh, now that it's passed in the Senate, they told her that 
they're going to try and get all the votes before uh, they introduce the unanimous consent in the House. And so that's good news. And so uh, as a frontline community group and the Reaper working group, there's two groups that we work with and uh, they're lobbying hard, uh, trying to get the unanimous, uh, unanimous consent passed in the House. And that's how we were able to get it uh, passed in the, in the Senate. And, and it's kind of strange because when I got the email from Kevin Davis, uh, one of the RICO working group, he said that it was passed through, uh, it finally got passed because they had two holdouts, two Republican holdouts since Monday. And so we were, we were like, who's the two Republicans? And then I got an email this morning from Kevin saying it got passed through a Democrat, uh, Senator, uh, Masto from Nevada. And so we were talking about it and debating this morning. How did, how she's a Democrat. So we figured out that she's from Nevada, so she probably talked to the Republicans saying, hey, you got to pass this. And so that I guess that's the way politics works over there in the States. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Robert, can we go over the eligibility? Uh, I know we try and do this every time we get you on. Sure. Uh, anyone on Guam from 1946 to 1962, if you were here on Guam for at least one year and you have the compensable diseases, uh, you want me to read the list of diseases, Chris? Or Yeah, it's a lengthy one, right? Go ahead. Yes. Uh, in the amendment, uh, we're trying to include uh, leukemia, a lymphocytic leukemia chronic, uh, because it's not uh, in the, the current bill, I mean, the current law. So we're adding that. Uh, primary cancer, urinary uh, bladder, uh, multiple melanoma, uh, cancer to colon, cancer to pharynx, cancer to thyroid, uh, uh, lymphomas other than Hodgkin's disease, uh, cancer to pancreas, cancer to small intestines, cancer to male and female breasts, cancer to salivary glands, uh, cancer to bile ducts, cancer to brain, uh, cancer to liver, uh, except cirrhosis and hepatitis B, uh, cancer to stomach, cancer to gallbladder, cancer to lung, and cancer to ovary. Those are the compensable diseases. And also, in, uh, in, uh, to add on, uh, it says, and other chronic diseases, which... Uh, That's pretty that, wide that open. Need, yeah. Right, it leaves it wide open. Right. Uh, if you get a doctor's uh, uh, statement stating that uh, it can be contributed to uh, your exposure to uh, ionizing radiation. So those are the diseases. And uh, just to let you know, too, we're, we're meeting with uh, the assistant deputy uh, the deputy assistant to President Biden Monday, uh, Erica Muratsuga, with our frontline community, asking them, the administration, to support us in the bills. Uh, We're Robert, having a Zoom meeting. That's yeah. great to hear. Robert, uh, people listening right now, maybe they're just hearing little bits and pieces, your cancer, radiation, compensation. Uh, how do they get a hold of you to get more info on this whole issue? And uh, well, just to find out, you know, how they can um, get, get involved with this and maybe help. Well, if, if, if they give you a call, uh, you can call me. Uh, you can give them my numbers if, if that's okay. Yeah, what is it? Uh, it's, I uh, know your number, Robert, but it's saved as Robert's, right? So Yeah, it's 671-688-7277. Uh, yes. Okay. So 671-688-7277. Yeah, give, give me a call. Uh, matter of fact, I get calls every day. I'm sure Even from the states. I, uh, it's... It's okay. I mean, uh, we've been doing this for 20 years. A lot of people, uh, I'm, I'm even surprised we've been doing this for 20 years and yeah. and there's yeah. still people out there that, that have no clue what we've been doing. But uh, this is for the people of Guam. Uh, they deserve it. We're eligible. The National Academies of Science say we are. It's just that Congress moves in a different uh, motion than we do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can say that again. Uh, yeah. Guys, and just so, so you know, Robert Celestial is not an elected official. He's just a regular guy who's been doing this for a couple decades. I mean, he was obviously affected um, by this whole issue. But, yeah, he, no one voted him into office. He's, you know, <laughs> just just saying that's all, Robert. So thank you. Yeah, we're a nonprofit organization. Uh, I was uh, I was in the Army. I was affected because I was cleaning up the, the radiation in the Marshall Islands in 77. And... Uh, and by the grace of God, I, uh, I was compensated. So when I found out, because it was kept secret, Chris, yeah, it was kept secret from the people of Guam till it was declassified in 1994. And then we found out, like, well, wait a minute, uh, why wasn't this presented to the people of Guam when they were uh, when they had all the statistics that uh, the, rape, the nuclear fallout was coming here? And so it was kept secret for so long. And then now, uh, hopefully, we we'll get our bills passed and get the the people of Guam compensated. Yeah, so Robert's so, been compensated for this, so he could have easily, you know, took the money and run and been done and, you know, had his and lived his life, but instead he's trying to bring everyone else along uh, with him. Thank you for that, Robert. 
Oh, God bless. And have a great weekend. Okay. Appreciate it. Esther. Robert Celestial, 746. Good morning, guys. We got to take a quick break, and then we're coming back with more link. Oh, we did have some comments here as I uh, read out earlier the story we did on the Guam Rugby Union as uh, they have um, made a a determination, a ruling. Uh, They've notified GDOE about this as well, that uh, they're not going to allow transgender um, athletes to play uh, 